good day. Today's lesson is on sequences. What is a sequence? A sequence is nothing more than a list of numbers written in a specific order. For example, we have the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and another set of numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. As you have observed, the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is written in an increasing order. At the same time, the difference between the two, between the numbers, have are the same, which is 1. In this set of numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, the difference between the numbers is 2. Now, for this set of numbers 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, as well as 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 9, although they are written in an increasing order, however, if you will observe, they don't have a common difference between the numbers or between the terms. Hence, these two some example of sets is not considered as sequence. Now for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, this sequence is called finite sequence because it has a last number while one half one third one fourth one fifth one sixth and with the three dots it is called infinite sequence the three dots indicates that there is no last number now because calculus is concerned with infinite sequences the word sequence in this context means an infinite sequence. Now each member in a sequence is called term. The first term in this sequence we have one half. The third term is one fourth and one over six is the fifth term of this sequence. In other words, in every term of the sequence, there is a corresponding positive integer that describes the position of that term in the sequence. For example, the first term is one half, the second term is one third, the third term is one fourth, the fourth term is one fifth, the fifth term is one sixth, and so on and so forth. And so, we can think the sequence as a function from positive integer to real numbers. And so, we have f of 2. For example, we have f of 2. 2 indicates the position of the term. And so, f of 2 is 1 third. The definition of a sequence function is a function whose domain is the set 1, 2, 3, 4 or of or all positive integers. Now, f of 2 can also be written in the form of f sub 2 equals 1 third. Now, in general, the sequence above can be written as well as f sub n, which is equal to 1 over n plus 1. Now, this 1 over n plus 1 is the formula of the sequence. This means that if n is equal to 1, our 
f sub n is 1 half. If n is 2, our f sub n, using this formula, is 1 third. Now, usually, the sequence can also be written in the form like this with the general formula. So, we have, in this example, we have the first five terms, and then we have the three dots, and then the general formula, then another three dots, indicating that this is continuous. And um, the sequence is infinite. Now, another way to write a sequence is to give a name. For example, we have A sub N. Now, A sub N is usually um, being used instead of F of F sub N. Now, A sub N is equal to 1 over N plus 1. But there are also other books that the, the way they write the sequence is in this way. So we have a bracket, then the general formula, and we also have in this uh, written in this way, which indicates that n will start at 1, n will end, n will end at infinity, positive infinity. So let's say for example we have this one. Write down the first few terms of each of the following sequences. So if the general formula is this and so if n is 1 the first term will be 2 the second term will be 3 fourth and the third term will be 4 over 9. Now, limit of a function. Let's try, um, let's try to graph a sequence function. So, let's say the sequence a sub n is equal to n plus 1 over n squared, where n are positive integers. Hence, if we are going to write the function, it will be this one. So, if n is 1, our a sub n using this formula is 2. If n is 2, use, using this formula, the y coordinate will be 3, 4. If we are going to graph our sequence function, it will look like this. Now, what have you observed in this graph? So, if n is 1, our a sub n is 2. If n is 2, our a sub n is 3, 4. And if n is 30, our a sub n is somewhere here. It's greater than 0. Greater than 0, but less than 0 0.5. So, it's here. So, what have you observed in this graph? As we can see, that as our n approaches to positive infinity, or in this case, as n approaches to 30, a sub n, our sequence term, is approaching to 0. Is approaching to 0. Our a sub n is approaching to 0. So meaning, if we are going to continue this sequence, um, sequence function, if n is 30, our a sub n will have a fraction that is almost equal to 0. Okay. Now, with that, again, 
we have noticed that if n increases, the sequence terms in base in the graph gets closer and closer to 0. Then we can say that 0 is the limit of the sequence. And so we have this one. The limit of a sub n in that particular example, as n approaches to positive infinity, is equal to 0. Again, our a sub n is n plus 1 over n squared. Now, the formal definition of the limits of a sequence, a sequence a sub n has the limit L if for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists a number n greater than 0, that if n is an integer and if n is greater than n, capital N, then the absolute value of a sub n minus L is less than the epsilon. And we write this as, limit of a sub n as n approaches to positive infinity is equal to L. Now, this is almost the same of the limits that we, um, we have in calculus 2. Now, if a sequence has a limit, the sequence is said to be convergent and it converges to that limit. If the limit of the sequence does not exist or is infinite, then it is divergent. Here is an example. Determine if the following sequences converge or diverge. If the sequence converges, determine its limit. Now, example number one is the sequence 3n plus 4. So the limit of 3n plus 4 as n approaches to infinity is equal to positive infinity. Why? We know that if n is positive infinity and, n, and if you're going to multiply it to 3, this will still be um, positive infinity and as our n increases the product of this increases and so if we're going to add it with 4 the more the n increases the sum will also increases hence the sequence is divergent because our limit is infinity